Okay, so I'll be going over number three from the midterm, part B. So the directions say the main method of the following classes run. What is printed for each commented line? This code runs without errors. So we have two static variables, x and y. y is not initialized to anything, so it'll default to zero. And, or sorry, x is not initialized to anything, so it'll default to zero. y is initialized to 10. We have an instance variable called message, which is also not initialized to anything. We have a constructor, which takes an x and a message. And x is assigned to the static variable x, whereas message is assigned to the instance variable message. We have a method called awesome method, which takes in two integers and a cool class object. And then we have a main method, which in first instantiates a cool class object, uh, calls awesome method on it, and then has four print statements. And we want to find out what do these print statements output. So the first thing that I would do, also I have the code pulled up next to me. So I'll be looking at that um, because there's no room to draw up there. But the first thing that we would want to do is keep track of our static variables because our static variables are the same throughout our di different objects of the cool class class. And so it's good to have uh, one area where we have the static variables and we're keeping track of them so that we know that as we change those static variables to change for all objects, not just for specific objects. So how I like to represent that is I just write the class name, which in this case is cool class and then the two static variables, which are x and y. x is not initialized to anything, so it's gonna to default to zero, and y is initialized to 10. So I can fill those in. And then as we change x or y, depending on what the code wants us to do, we can change them in that section so that we know that those are relevant to all the objects and not specific to objects. So the first thing, the first line in our main method is cool class CC equals new cool class. And then the two parameters it's taking in are five and wow. So we can instantiate CC and have it point to a cool class object. So how to represent that is with the box and pointer diagram. So I'm gonna write new cool class at the top so that we know that this is a object of the cool class class. And the one, instance variable we have is message. And so now we can look at the parameters being passed in. So the first parameter we pass in is five. So like I said earlier up here in the constructor, we see that when we pass in five, we are assigning that number to the static variable x. And so that's why when we draw the cool class object here. We don't have any x variable in it because we have this x is static, so we're keeping track of it over here. And so we would move over here and we would change this to 5 because that's the first parameter passed in. The second parameter passed in is the string wow. And so since strings are objects, we would have to do a box and pointer to represent that. And so we would just do a pointer, pointer to a box. And the box takes in wow. So now we can move in, move on to the next line, which is cc.awesome method. And we can create, we can open up a new frame for awesome method, which just entails drawing a little box, writing the method name on top, awesome method, and then passing in the parameters. So the two, the three parameters that they have are 10, 3, and cc. So we have x, which is 10, y, which is 3, and then cc, they're passing in the cc object that we instantiated earlier. So we can create a pointer to that object. Okay, so now we need to go through and actually execute the awesome method. So in the awesome method, the first line is x equals two times x. So over here, we're gonna change this to two times x, which is two times 10, which is 20. And we have to keep in mind that when they say x equals two times x, they are not referring to the static variables x and y. They are referring to the parameters that were passed in called x and y. That's super important to note because even though they have the same name, they're not pointing or referring to the same value or object. So the same thing with the second line, which is y equals 10 times y. We would change this to 10 times y, which is 10 times 3, which is 30. And then the next line wants us 
it says cc.message equals nice. So we see where is cc pointing? It's pointing to this object. We look at its message and we're gonna change that to nice. So we can erase this. We're gonna erase this and then put in nice. And then the final line wants us to reassign this CC to a new cool class object. So let's create a new cool class object. So we can create it right here. So we have new cool class. Again, that's how I am referring to objects so that we know that this is an object of the cool class class. And then we have the one instance variable, which is message. And so the first parameter in this new cool class object that we're passing in is one. And remember, every time we instantiate a new cool class object, we are going to pass in something for X and that X is going to go and change the static variable X to whatever we've passed in. So we're passing in one for X. So we're gonna go up here and change this to one because that's what we passed in in this new cool class object that we've created. And then we put in the message. So the message for this particular object is yeah. So we can create a box and pointer where we have yeah. And then last but not least, we reassign this CC to point at our new object. So we can erase this pointer and we can point over here. So now that we are done with the awesome method, we can move on to the next um, lines in our main method, which are our four print statements. So if we move up, you can't really see the print statements, um, but the first print statement is system.out.println x. So when they ask us to print out x, they're referring to x from the static variables. So that would just be one. Then they ask us to print out y, which again, they're referring to the y from the static variables, which we're keeping track over here. And so that would be 10. <clears throat> and then they ask us to print out cc.x. So x is a static variable. So any object of the cool class class will have the same value for x, which is the same value as a static variable x. And so this would also be one. If we had <clears throat> another cool class object, let's call it like cc1, and we asked what is the x value, what is cc1.x, it would also be one because it doesn't matter how many objects we create of the cool class class, they will always have one as their x value. And then the final line wants us to print out cc.message. So, me so message is an instance variable, so we have to actually check the object for that. So you check CC, we check message, and we see that it's pointing to nice. And so that would just point out or print out nice. And that's all for part 3B.